Hi everyone, Hammered Pants here and I have another video for you in the American line. This is the Tier 5 T1 Heavy and uh, we're going to take a look at this very interesting and exciting heavy line. Um, and I'm going to give you a complete guide. It's a longer video than normal because uh, I want to you know, really uh, give you as complete a guide as possible. Because for many of you starting this line, it's going to be your first heavy tank. So I want to make sure that you start off on the right track. Uh, we're going to use Blitzhanger.com. Um, take a look at tech spec in a second but as i said this is a heavy tank right and the previous tanks to it if you went the m7 or whatever are not so it's a big change you need to be prepared therefore i would suggest that you watch the heavy tank guide we have on channel i've put a link into the description and um, primarily to help you but also i know some of you are extremely lazy bastards so this makes it as easy as possible for you now let's have a look at this uh, tank in the um um, uh, tech line that we see in game so you can have the m7 beforehand and that's a medium tank right so we're coming up here now to the t1 heavy you can go to the m4 sherman t1 heavy but if you're going to t1 heavy you're going in the heavy line so we want you to understand what heavy tanks are what their role are in the game and how to play them and um, this is a great heavy tank to start with by the way guys you're not going to regret it you won't regret going down this line there isn't really any bad tanks there no tanks that um, are not able to compete in their tier or even when up tiered and the t1 heavy where it all starts is no exception so it's a great tank to start with great heavy tank to start with great way to learn the genre of heavy tanks and to play those tanks to good effect and hopefully this guide will um, allow you to do that um, even better than before now we're going to have a look at the tech spec as always using blitzhanger.com but before that i'm going to ask for your indulgence just for you know 30 40 seconds and um, you know i don't get anything from my channel i don't monetize i don't want to earn money from other gamers um but I, one of the things i do is though i'm a historian and i have along with my brother this um history page on facebook called napoleon's notebook and we do some pretty cool posts here's one we just did today on the last hazard general later field marshal mackinson on the eastern frontier in world war one one of the lesser known but one of the most brilliant generals of world war one you'll see here we also have posts um about uh, the genko war in japan the civil war in japan uh, between the shogunate and the imperial forces and um, there's another one on the battle of marathon we recently did um you know and we've got some quirky stuff here this one here about how mrs ferguson's tea set actually started um the pacific war in world war ii um and you know some very interesting cool stuff um so if you are into history um maybe just pop along and give it a like um so that's some uh, unashamed uh, self-promotion there sorry about that guys now anyway let's get back onto our tech spec the uh t1 heavy which is a great heavy tank um, and we're going to tell you all you need in this guide to make you play that tank effectively. Now, uh, starting off with your provisions, I would run Coca-Cola and Standard Fuel, improves the performance. Uh, you don't need a protective kit because this tank is very heavily armoured and it's going to protect your crew anyway. And two gun options, 75 and a 76mm. Top gun has extra DPM, but you can get it last in terms of your upgrades because the 75mm gun is quite effective at tier 5, even if you're up tiered. There's only one millimeter in the difference and you can live with it and i'd recommend getting the engine first because the engine is a tier 7 engine and it just makes it a, such a super tank and you'll see that when we look at some of the gameplay this tank can move um, and we're going to look at the, that in detail in tech spec as we go on now um i think that um get the engine first and therefore and then you can get the gun last you can live with the 75 millimeter for a while with 76 millimeter top gun though you get 128 millimeters of pen with ap 177 apcr which is a promo and he actually gives you 38 millimeters of pen which is not bad at all and we'll actually go through the sides and back of medium and light tanks uh, that you're going to come across in tier five and even some in tier six like the chaffee um the muzzle velocity is low it's 7, 792 meters per second. We max that out with supercharge to get it to 1030 meters per second, but it's still pretty low. Um, but with ABCR, you get 1287 meters per second. The shells are much faster. So if you're trying to hit something fast moving, maybe think about switching up to an APCR round because the round arrives that much faster than your standard AP round. Um, and you know that's important if you're trying to make a deflection shot or a tracking shot if you don't know what they are we have discussed those in detail in the sniping guide and in the td guide so have a look at those it's all explained there 
uh, so it will no longer be a mystery to you. And they are skills that you should have as you go up through the tiers. Now reload, if you use gun rammer 7.65, six, sorry, 6.5 seconds, which is excellent, and it gives you 160 to 200 DP per round. 200 DP is your max roll, and that's really good. So it has good DPM. Gun depression is excellent, 10 degrees. And elevation is 30 degrees. Wow, one of the highest in Blitz. What does that mean? Well, it means this tank has fantastic gun alignment. What is gun alignment? It is the ease with which you can line up your gun with the enemy tank. And this has fantastic gun alignment, so it's not gonna let you down. The dispersion is a bit high. Um, it's 0.42 um, if you don't use um, refined gun, so therefore use refined gun. As a heavy tank, you're not going to fire as much when you move, so therefore you don't need um, uh, to run vertical stabilizer as much as you do if, let's say, you're running a light or medium tank, when you're going to be firing much more when you are moving. Now, the speed is 34 kilometers an hour and does 12 in reverse. And this may seem like it's, mm, you know, not great, not bad, you know, but the power to weight ratio is awesome. Traverse is awesome. What does that mean? Well, power to weight ratio is basically the ability, tank's ability to accelerate and to get to a top speed, its top speed. Now, when this tank was being developed as a prototype and later when it went into production as the M6, which is actually the tier six that you will have after this, um, it had this new fantastic hydraulic drive system. And that's why the tank in Blitz is so maneuverable. It is fantastic. It moves really well. And you're gonna see this in the gameplay. It moves almost like a medium tank. Um, and when you consider the armor profile it has, which we're looking at here, this makes this a fantastic tank and a great tank for you guys who are starting out on the heavy line. Now, the armor on the front is troll. It is simply troll. Just look at that. It's like a tomato with an erection. It's just red everywhere. Um, you know, you are going to bounce shots and get steel walls and Spartan medals in this tank to beat the band. But it also has side armor you see here if you look at the relative armor numbers on the top left there are red numbers there you can see that when you are angling this armor you get really high relative armor numbers relative armor numbers are when you actually move the armor to a angle that makes it um, relatively thicker than it is in actuality so on the sides there you can see there's 90 millimeters of armor but when you angle it and side scrape you actually get that up to you know 600 plus millimeters of armor which is just incredible and um, 274 meter millimeters of armor you saw there even when you're not really angling if you don't know what side scraping is if you don't know how to do it it's all explained in the heavy tank guide also, if you want to look at even more detail, if you look at the KV-1 guide we have on channel, there's even a more expansive side scraping guide than that to help players who are just coming into tier five and just starting to play heavy tanks. So have a look at that as well. You'll find it in the heavy tank um, playlist or in the Russian playlist. Now, in terms of um, the armor, you can see even when you're up tiered, this tank is just fantastic. You're gonna get bounce shots. Um, when you're in a brawl in this tank, and it is an excellent brawler, just keep facing up to the enemy, and we're gonna have a look at that in the gameplay. Just keep facing up to the enemy, and you will bounce shots. Now we're gonna have a look at me buying the tank on this account, and um, it's the first time I have it on this account. So uh, we're gonna go in and uh, buy it, and we're gonna do the upgrades using the XP. I have saved up XP, so I'm gonna get all the upgrades initially. I know that some of you won't be able to do that. You'll have to grind through it, get the XP and grind up. As I said, get the engine first, um, and you can get the gun last, because that engine is a tier seven engine, and uh, once you have that, this tank is a completely different uh, species, and it's really really going to perform for you and it won't let you down that would be my recommendation for you and um, now uh, i'm going to just boost up a bit of the training on heavy tanks here before i go in as i'm changing because before this i was playing actually what was it playing mediums i think um, and then we're going to have a look at loading up the consumables so um now we're going to just uh, take some camo if you want to uh, check out the consumables i have loaded up and um, basically it's the large repair kit it's adrenaline and small repair kit and i have them loaded up like that so that i hit the small repair kit and um, 
bottom first. I don't hit the adrenaline by accident because it's in the middle and hit the top repair kit last when I need it or if I go on fire, which hopefully I won't. Speaking of going on fire, by the way, if you can hear a humming in the background here, I do apologize, but you're gonna have to bear with it because that's the air conditioning which is running because it's as hot as Vulcan's crack here today. And you know one of those days where it's so hot, your balls are like a used tea bag. So I have to run the air conditioning. So apologies, there's a little bit of annoying home in the background. Um, but yeah, we just have to get on with it because otherwise I'd probably um, go on fire myself, self-combust like one of those uh, Vietnamese monks um, or the dude here in Prague that set himself on fire in front of the Soviet tank, which takes us nicely back to our tank guide. So we're gonna have a look at the um, equipment loadout here. So I use gun rammer because you've got good pen on this tank so you don't need to run calibrated shells and you know my uh, uh, thesis is I like to fire um, as often as I can and I don't have a problem using APCR because that's what it's fucking there for and don't let people by the way tell you that you shouldn't be firing APCR or Pramo you're a gold noob and all that that's just nonsense that's just people um, who you know um, you know are just you know uh, trying to put you off the best way to play the game and it often happens when you kill them by the way even if you haven't fired a Pramo round and um, by the way gold rounds you probably wonder what I call that that's uh, a throwback to the time in Blitz but like when I started when you had to pay for Pramo rounds with gold you know to do it anymore you can pay for it credits and um, so they're more or less self-financing now anyway so it's just nonsense from from people so don't mind them and um, you want to play this game to enjoy you want to play this game to win you're on a pen and um, more when you use APCR and Pramo and you're gonna see in this game by the way that sometimes you just need it right even if you're running calibrated shells to get that extra pen sometimes you just need APCR or Pramo that's why it's in the game if you didn't need it it wouldn't be there um, so um, I'm being a good team player here I'm calling and play I'm telling my team where I'm gonna go this is my first game run out in this tank so I haven't been up tier good um, but if you are up tiered in this tank um, you know I would just go with other heavies. Uh, it can more than hold its own. It can pen most tier six tanks, uh, even front on heavy tanks. It can pen them, it has decent gun, and you're still gonna get bounces even if you're up tiered because this, particularly this frontal armor is just troll. And you're gonna see there's gonna be loads and loads of bounces here. Um, so it's not just me saying that, you can actually see it in practice here. So I'm gonna follow my team around here because we leave the enemy are over the other side. And here we have our first customer. Um, you see I load up APCR here just because I want to make sure I pen him, right? Um, good chance an AP round would bounce off the front of the Excels here. Um, so I just uh, fire the APCR. Now, um, see here, I'm just going to slow that down so you can have a look at that bounce. That's our first bounce in the game. And you can see here again, firing the APCR to, APCR to make sure I pen. I get a miss there right in front of me because I backed off. And, you know, look, guys. Um, Particularly if you're starting, um, you know, why not use APCR? Because, you know, um, while you're uh, less experienced in the game, and if you're, you know, this is your first heavy tank, I'm assuming you're not so experienced, it makes it easier for you to pen. And while you get the skills that allow you to pen with normal rounds more frequently, just use APCR while you're acquiring those skills. Because, you know, the more damage you do, the more XP you get, um, you know the better um, equipment you can get etc and the better player you can become and you know if people say to you oh you know you're a gold noob firing pram and all that you know pff, fuck them and um, you do whatever helps you win and become a better player that's simple right it's a game it's there for enjoyment um, and you enjoy more when you win more right um, although I would say to you guys you know if you are new to the game as well look you know losing is part of the game too losing is as much part of the game as winning so you know don't fret if you lose and all I would say to you the only bad thing about losing is if you don't learn a lesson from it if you lose so what and um, you know just uh, take it on chain and learn some lessons from it now here's an interesting uh, replay of me in a brawl with the su 85b it's a big 85 millimeter gun which you see he just can't pay me front on now what i'm doing here is i am put my armor front onto him of course but also i am moving i'm waggling um let's say the bosom of the tank because the front of the tank does look somewhat like a bosom um, uh, waggling it in his face um, and this is not uh, any sort of flirtation is really just making it more difficult for him to pen me 
and um, there are a couple of spots as you can see here on the front of the T1 Heavy that can be penned very few and far between uh, but if you um, stand still then at least you um, are giving your opponent a, a small opportunity to pen you if you keep moving it makes it far more difficult um, probably should have uh, just fired AP there I forgot to change up my um, shell type you can see another thing I do guys is I always keep the shell selector open so it makes it easier to rot through, rotate through your shell types um, you can see here uh, when we look at the T1 Heavy front on this is what the opponents the red team are seeing when they look at me it's very very difficult to pen right and um, it's like the traffic lights when you're late for work red 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 all the way um, and you know that's why you know load up some APCR and use it when you have to especially if you're trying to pen um, uh, something like the Excel here another T1 heavy um, you know a T14 something like that that has a lot of um, armor on the front uh, now this um, M5A1 Stuart player is very good I have to say um, and you'll see I get into a brawl with him here uh, in a couple of seconds and he is a very very decent player he knows what he's doing he's trying to get around me he's trying to uh, use his ex um, his superior maneuver maneuverability to get around and to cause me some damage but and this is the thing about this tank and this, it takes a lot of players in medium and light tanks by surprise is its maneuverability when you have that tier 7 top grade engine you see he can't get around me, he can't outmaneuver me, he can't get to the sides and back which is what he's trying to do because he knows that's the vulnerable part of my tank. I keep the armour facing onto him, he cannot get a clear shot and I'm just about to clear him off when one of my allies comes in and just smashes him for me. Um, again, you know, people say that's kill stealing, stuff like that, I don't actually believe there's such a thing. Um, in the game it's only a game and you're there to clear off the enemy tanks um, you know so and sometimes you'll do it so if people set talk, start talking about that's just more this bullshit toxic bullshit in the game ignore it um, so you see there um, I've actually fulfilled a couple of missions in that and got my um, box of tricks from more gaming thank you very much and you see there pretty good decent game almost uh, two K damage three kills in a tier 5 tank 1.8k damage is not bad at all right now we're gonna have a look at a mastery game next by the way guys um, <clears throat> which I think I recorded yesterday I think or maybe the day before no yesterday I think now um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, game playing and mastery badges and stuff like that there are some players in this game and some of them are youtubers who are like prodigies at blitz they have this natural talent they just start playing the game and they're just fantastic at it and you know it just comes naturally to them like any sort of game or sports right some people are just naturally gifted i'm not one of those right um i wasn't a good player when i started in fact i was absolutely atrocious at one time on my original account i had a 38 percent win rate and i would imagine i would say that of that 38 percent probably 30 percent of it was just blind luck and being on good teams but i became i think i'm a good player now and i became a good player by understanding the game learning the mechanics and utilizing those mechanics so basically utilizing the physics and the mathematics and the algorithms that are around this game and um, so I'm not um, you know as I said a prodigy I'm not naturally talented at this that game but I became a good player by understanding it by learning about it and um, by um, you know utilizing and manipulating the uh, physics mathematics and algorithms of the game the good news for you guys is that you can do that too right and especially with the help of these videos or videos from other two youtubers uh, you know so um, and you've probably seen I was featured on a couple of channels recently like little fingers and uh, blitz with muffin and um, so maybe check out those guys as well now um, where was I I mean, lost my train it's hot my wish this happens all the time oh yes yeah so we're talking about you know becoming a, a good player right so there is no reason why you cannot do what I do and there's nothing I'm doing in this game that you can't do either not absolutely nothing there's nothing um, you know that uh, you uh, will see here that you can't do although don't do what the guy did there um, and don't do what these guys are doing here right look at this 
They were firing over and now they see me coming. And instead of turning their tanks to face me, and both of these tanks have great armor, right? A Matilda and a T1 Heavy, right? What do they do? They just turn their guns around and start firing at me, but still present their vulnerable um, backsides to me. If you look here, their backsides are like, the, like a baboon's ass, right? So, you know, very easy for me to pen as well. Now, that's not, that's uh, what not to do, right? But this isn't any spectacular gameplay on my part. It's just bad gameplay on their part. It's inexperience. So let's learn from their mistakes. So if in a situation like this, if you're flanked, somebody comes up behind you, turn your tank around, get that frontal armor on and make it more difficult for him to pen. And don't give him any easy shots like these two guys are giving to me here, right? And you can see the difference, right? I'm bouncing all their shots because I'm into a position where I'm side scraping and all they can see is the really, really strong turret and frontal parts of my armor. Take out the T1 Heavy and the Matilda just believes that he's had way too much of this and he's going off. And this comes back to what I'm saying, um, guys. You know, there's nothing spectacular, there's no magic here, right? I'm not doing anything that is in any way spectacular. You look at it and go, whoa, you know, what a player. This is basic stuff. It's just utilizing the strengths of the tank, which I know about and which you know about now because you're watching this video and utilizing um, the basic mechanics and physics of the game knowing that the front of the tank has more armor than the other parts um, you know, and utilizing all the mechanics around the game so there's no reason why you guys watching this particularly if it's you know your first tank in tier 5 that you can't do all the things that I've done here there's nothing in here that you can't learn and that's the good news um, you can become a good player um, just by uh, taking some advice of people who have made mistakes before um, and avoiding the mistakes by listening to them and as I said you know watch my videos and maybe watch those of some other uh, youtubers as well um, and a couple of good guys are the guys I mentioned there Littlefinger and um, Blitz with Muffin. Now um, we have one medium tank left here and you know um, both of us are relatively slow moving heavy tanks, um, me and the B1, um, so we want to uh, try to draw him out to us. Uh, but the Anko, um, he's not uh, as silly as we had hoped, and um, he's gonna he's a far superior view range, by the way, um, and better camo numbers than us. That's why we can't see him and he sees us. Now, you'll have some people who don't understand these mechanics of the game saying, oh, he's an invisible tank, it's not fair. It's a simple, basic mechanics of the game. He has a, f a, a higher and farther view range than we have. That's why he can spot us and shoot us. And this guy knows that if he comes in against two heavy tanks close up, we are going to uh, smash him. So what he's going to do is he's going to sit on the outskirts, use his superior view range to spot us. There, we're spotted again. And he's going to put some rounds into us where we can't see him. So while we're trying to draw him into the base, he's trying to draw us out of the base. Now I know that um, uh, we're just going to be uh, picked off and pinged and he is gonna, the game's going to end in the draw. So what I decided to do is go after him. Uh, um, I asked the B1 to stay so that um, we also can continue to capture the base. I, but I didn't mean stay sitting in the open so that you can just get killed. Um, but maybe he misinterpreted what I said so perhaps that's possibly my fault of miscommunication. Um, now we have a, a bit of a problem here right. Because uh, he's gonna, he's rabbiting now. He's off. He's in a faster tank, and he thinks he's gonna outrun me. And if I start chasing him in a straight line, he is. But I know the power to weight ratio of my tank is brilliant. He may have a higher top speed, but I'm really fast accelerating up to my top speed. I'm really fast over this rough terrain. So I'm gonna head him off at an angle, so you can see I'm dog legging into him. And now. He knows that if he keeps going straight, I'm gonna come up behind him, put her, put her, put, try to put a couple of rounds into him. So, he stops, has a pot shot at me, misses, and now he's panicked. I try to track him, doesn't work, and um, but I put my armor front on him again, bounce, put a round into him, trying to ram him, little ram onto him. By the way, you can ram all day long at this tank if you're front on because its armor is just so fantastic. You're hardly gonna sustain any damage at all and most of the time none. He gets another bounce off me here and this guy's just having a bad day at the office and I smash him. I have better armor and um, superior traverse acceleration 
and the net result is a 4.183 net damage game. What do you mean by net damage? Well, it's the total of the damage points you do plus the damage that you bounce. So it's 2.5k of damage and 1.67k of damage bounced. Why is that important? Well, if you're bouncing shots, it's not damaging you. But also look at it this way, guys. It's a team game. If you're bouncing shots, um, then those shots are not penetrating your allies either. A shot you bounce is a shot that could penetrate your allies. So you're actually uh, saving not just your hit points, but the hit points of your entire team. So it's a really, really good team play. So 4.1k, uh, almost 4.2k net uh, damage game would be impressive and nothing to be ashamed of in tier 10. In tier 5, it's just amazing. And again, that's what you can do with this tank. High caliber, mastery game, uh, top gun, steel wall, all the medals that you want when you're playing. Um, Radley Walters for kill, uh, five kills as well. All the medals that you want when you're playing a heavy tank. And as I said, guys, nothing in that game that you can't repeat. You know, I am not a prodigy at this game. They're all just basic skills that you can master too. Now let's just have a recap. This is a great heavy tank. Perfect practice for the higher tiers too. It's a big jump going from a medium to a heavy tank, different style of play. So watch the heavy tank guide on the channel, spend some time on preparation. It's always worthwhile. As the SAS say, you can train hard and fight easy, or train easy and fight hard. So basically do your prep um, and watch the heavy tank guide. You get the top engine first, right? Because uh, that power to weight ratio really makes this tank something special. 6.5 second reload on the tank, giving you 160 DP damage points per round. 200 is your max roll. And the frontal armor, as you saw, is just troll. Face up, utilize it, you will get a lot of joy. You can side scrape in this tank as well. Practice this skill. Not so important in tier five, but when you move up the tiers, you're really gonna need it. The gun alignment is excellent. Utilize that as well. Um, you know, you saw here, it's a super, super brawler. You can go into a brawl, especially if you're top tier, with absolute confidence at this tank. Um, and being up tier in this tank is not actually so bad. It's not as bad as it is in other tanks. It can hold its own for sure. Just be a little bit more cautious and go with your heavies and uh, your top tier uh, heavies and go support them. And as I said, guys, there's nothing in the gameplay you saw here that you can't do. With a bit of practice, a bit of knowledge of the game, understanding the dynamics of the game, you can do that too, and you can become an excellent blitzer and an excellent heavy tank player. So cheers much. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. And I guess all that remains for me to say is, pants off.